Hi everyone, meteorologist Rusty Dawkins. Uh, let's look at the forecast for the next couple of days. A few severe thunderstorm and uh, large hail damaging wind and tornado threats out there as we head through uh, Wednesday and then again Thursday. Wednesday more so, Thursday not as much, but still there. So let's take a look at uh, the setup. Lows and highs for the day uh, really have a very uh, spring feel to it. I mean, they're very warm. Look at those lows. We're in the 30s. Highs today, 56 in International Falls and Billings, Montana. That's way above average. 70s from Lincoln to Oklahoma City, uh, almost 70 in Indianapolis. Uh, just about everywhere when you look at uh, this whole area, right? The entire eastern two-thirds of the U.S. a lot warmer than they're supposed to be. That continues as we head through Wednesday afternoon. So one more really warm day for that entire area that is a solid uh, 10 to 20 degrees uh, above average. So way, way above average for Wednesday. But a cold front is going to be making its way through. Here it is. You can see this cold front kind of like that. That area, this area right here. Let's see if I can get that to work. There you go. That area right there where that cold front's going to slice through, has a decent chance for severe weather, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, but the high temperature anomaly for Thursday, again, eastern half of the U.S., much warmer than average. Western half of the state start, or the, the U.S. starting to cool off a little bit. And then as we head into Friday, much of the U.S. has uh, cooled off closer to normal, still above average for some like even the Lincoln, Indianapolis, single digits above average, uh, but still 10 to 12 degrees, 14 degrees above average for the East Coast and the Deep South, but much cooler, like Denver, 20 degrees below average. So things are starting to change up a little bit. The 6 to 10 uh, day outlook, notice the eastern half of the U.S. Uh, for March 18th through the 22nd, cooler than average, finally, after being warmer than average for February and most of March, flip-flops in the western half of the U.S. warmer than average over uh, March 18th through March 22nd. Uh, precipitation potential, there's some out there for the west and the south. It looks like uh, drier than average uh, from about St. Louis, maybe Kansas City east uh, towards uh, the northeastern coast. So let's go over the uh, severe weather parameters here. Here's what it looks like. This general area right there, that um, blob, this right here has the potential for being severe, large hail, damaging wind, and uh, we could see some uh, isolated tornadoes as well. And then it kind of fizzles out a little bit as we head into the overnight, uh, but still some of these could be on the strong to severe side. So this doesn't look like an outbreak, but definitely could see some strong storms uh, to severe storms as we head through the evening. So this area circled basically over Kansas City from about Lincoln south to Kansas City, including about the northern half of Missouri, the northeastern corner, of uh, Kansas and southeastern Nebraska has that slight risk, which is a level two out of five uh, for severe weather. This, this is for basically Wednesday evening into the overnight uh, for Tuesday or Thursday morning. Tornado threat, basically a bullseye uh, around Kansas City, but it's a 5% chance. I mean, it's not 10, not 15, but it's not zero. It's 5%. There's a decent chance for at least one or two isolated tornadoes. The green area is 2%, so again, small, but it's not zero. So there's a smaller chance where the green is at, but there's still a chance. The best chance for damaging wind surrounding Kansas City, uh, again, and then everybody else has about a 5% chance. That's a 50, uh, 57 mile per hour or greater uh, wind potential uh, for Wednesday. And then large hail, those uh, little black lines there, that means uh, two inches in diameter hail a possibility uh, where those are at. Everybody else in that uh, yellow area will likely see some, at least some uh, quarter size, if not golf ball size hail uh, out of storms that do eventually form. The instability, the cape, uh, it looks like it's best in this area right kind of like this area but you look right there and that's probably your best chance for seeing the instability that's where everything is going to come together from about kansas city south and in northeastern parts of oklahoma and this uh, energy hel uh, helicity index which is basically spin in the atmosphere uh, again where you see the oranges and the pinks and the purples that's your best chance for seeing some sort of spin up somewhere uh, and everything has to come together uh, right at the same time. I think eastern Kansas has that better chance at seeing that. Significant hail, just about everybody has a chance at seeing some decent sized hail. When you start to see the, the reddish hues pop up, we're kind of seeing a couple of areas like right in here, 
Uh, this has an, a darkish orangish hue. So there's some areas that could see some decent hail. Kind of fades out a little bit until the early morning hours and from Wichita to Oklahoma City, that area might see some uh, bigger hail. Now the significant tornado parameter, you're getting into about a level one. This, uh, this area right here, level one, maybe one and a half in some spots. But it's not really in the right place. I mean, the, the parameter is there, but you need more than just that. And that would be in that Kansas City South area. And notice it's just about a one. So the chance is there. Uh, it's not zero, uh, but it's not very high either. And notice down here towards Oklahoma City, that's where the, the three and the fours are starting to show up. But most of your activity is going to be over here in eastern Kansas. And uh, everything needs to come together at the right time. So we'll see. There's a chance. Now, moving into Thursday, another chance for storms, mainly east of there. Same storm system, just further east now. And uh, it's basically from about Chicago south towards Dallas. So you're looking at uh, this swath right here. I think this is more of a wind event. Uh, and then it all moves off to the east fairly quickly. And notice it's out of that circle by about 6 a.m. Friday. Likely won't be severe after that. So this area from Chicago down to Dallas, that yellow shaded area, this is going to be your best chance probably for damaging wind. When you start to see something that's that big, it's hard to get clusters. It's just this is more of a wind event than it is anything else. And that's kind of what this means. The, the instability, a very large area. So you're probably going to get a long line of storms that are blowing through with 50, 60, 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Notice how it fizzles out though by Thursday. Uh, um, this is 7 p.m. This area right here just can't hold it together. Watch this. It's gone by 11 p.m. It's still stronger down here, but it didn't take long for that instability to disappear. Now, significant hail, it's it's kind of, notice all the holes. It's jagged. It doesn't have uh, anything better than an orangish color. Uh, you're not seeing reddish hues or anything like that. It just can't get itself together. So hail, I don't think, is going to be much of an issue. And uh, when you have long line storms, you almost need clusters for the significant tornadoes. This doesn't have that. So a little good news there. You probably won't see any tornadoes, but damaging wind is definitely going to be a possibility as these storms roll through. So how much precipitation are we looking at? Quite a bit uh, in some areas. You're looking at uh, a line here, a bunch in this area when those storms roll through, and then this is snowfall for the upper elevation. Speaking of that, there's where all your snow is at. Uh, you're looking at uh, the upper elevations, the Rocky Mountains, and maybe just a little bit in the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, maybe into Michigan. So there's your severe weather threat and snowfall potential. Hope you liked it. Hope you subscribe it. Hope you do all of that good stuff. We'll see you next time.